Colombia. I know what you're thinking, so let's get it out of the way right now. Yes, this country had a reputation for a long time. A bad one. And this city, Medellin, even worse. For much of the 80s and 90s, it was one of the most dangerous cities on earth. Plagued by drug wars, kidnapping, and murder. But things change. It's 2022. Those days are long gone. 30 years of hard work and healing forged a lush, progressive, productive city. A city full of food, music, art, and fable. A city of redemption. Medellin is served by two airports, Jose Maria Cordova International Airport, located about 20 kilometers east of the city, which caters to, as the name might suggest, international flights, and Olaya Herrera Airport, which primarily serves domestic and regional services. It's much more likely you'll be arriving at the international airport, so let's focus on that. It's a small but functional airport that underwent a significant renovation in 2017, giving it the feel of a modern European airport, but without losing its Colombian charm. And, as we discovered, its location in a steep valley can make for some sporting landings. Getting from the airport to Medellin is a simple taxi journey. In 2019, a new highway opened, which cut the traveling time from the airport to Medellin from 45 to just 20 minutes, which, in turn, reduce the fare. You'll pay a fixed fare from 75,000 pesos from the airport into town. You can also take Uber for around the same price. Uber drivers pick up opposite doors two and three in arrivals. Medellin is the only city in Colombia with its own metro system, a fact which is a source of considerable pride here. And you can understand why the metro system is clean, safe, cheap, and really easy to use because there's only two lines. Line A runs north to south along the center of the city and line two runs west from San Antonio in the middle of the city. A ticket will cost you just 2,750 pesos. That's way less than one US dollar and you can go anywhere on the system. I can't think of a metro system anywhere else in the world that is that good of value. Rather wonderfully, Medellin's public transport system includes cable cars. I can't think of any other city in the world that has that. But for the price of your metro ticket, you can also ride the city's six metro cable lines, which string the city's hillside enclaves together. Taxis in Medellin are cheap and plentiful, but a couple of things to remember. While you can hail a taxi off the street the old fashioned way, it's generally recommended to use an app like Cabify. Little easier, little safer. Also, Bear in mind the heinous traffic in this city, especially during bad weather and rush hour. And finally, if you've never really driven in Latin America before, one piece of advice, buckle up. Uber is widely available in Medellin and is incredibly cheap compared to European and North American cities. In fact, it can often be cheaper than a regular taxi, so spend a couple of seconds to do the comparison before you smash that button with your greasy fingers. And I can't resist capping off this transport section with something a little different. Perhaps Medellin's most talked about mode of transport in recent years have been escalators. Yup, escalators. To aid the residents of the city's enormous communas, escalators were installed to help navigate the steep incline that takes you to the tippy top. Locals tell me that the communas now, for the most part, friendly, safe, and accessible are almost unrecognizable from the hostile, risk-laden enclaves they used to be. And these escalators symbolize a quite literal step up for residents who have truly earned it. I have 
have a bad habit or a weak spot, maybe, if you're being generous. I love art. My walls are covered in pieces that I've picked up during my travels, physical reminders of the memories I've made along the way, and I love them. But you know what I've always wanted? A Banksy. I hear you laughing, but you know what? Now I can. Through Masterworks, the new way to invest in exclusive, highly collectible blue chip art. But it's not just about owning a Banksy or even a Picasso, it's about owning an asset. A few weeks ago, the New York Times hailed art as a bulletproof investment among the stock market chaos. But art is more than just stability, it's got performance too. Some sectors of art have even been outpacing the S&P 500 for the last 26 years. So if you're one of the millions of people looking for places to reallocate your capital and diversify your portfolio, check out Masterworks. They securitize paintings with the SEC so their 450,000 plus members can add art into their portfolios through fractional investing. And the results have been incredible. So far, the four paintings they've sold after offering them on the platform have each delivered over 30% net returns to their investors. If you're interested in learning more about investing in high value pieces by artists like Banksy and Picasso, you can get VIP access and skip the waiting list simply by clicking on the link in the description below. The beginning of all things great, of course, is breakfast. Local food guide and historian Gaston takes us to do as the locals do. You will see empanadas all around Colombia in every corner. In every metro station, in every neighborhood, is always an empanada stand. You see a bakery and they have a corner with empanadas. It's the fast snack we have in Colombia. You're hungry, you get an empanada and you're done. They're made of very thin layer of cornmeal. They're going to be fried and inside is a preparation with potato, rice, red meat, so usually beef, sometimes with chicken and sometimes with other stuff like a red beans and something. It's very oh, wow. traditional. It's a calorie bomb. <laughs> me regalas, por favor, dos empanadas. Okay, have one of these. They're just served like that. That's so good. It's a solution for everything. You go to a school, in a school cafe team, they have empanadas. See why? Perfect. Fueled up with calorie bomb empanadas, Gaston explains Medellin's mercantile heritage. Medellin, Medellin is full of traders. We love trading. In fact, Medellin is the city what it is because of the trading. So we say that a paisa can sell you even a hole, and you're going to be happy about that. So, in fact, what put Medellin in the place it is right now was the textile, the manufacturing of fabric. That's why you see a lot of people selling goods and selling clothing and everything. So we're very famous of that. So textile is one of the biggest industry we have. And just as prolific as textile vendors plying their wares, you'll find street food vendors across Medellin serving up all manner of fried goodness. Buñuelo is the most popular dish or item eaten in Colombia. We have buñuelos in other South American countries, but the best ones are the made here. They have a special character that make special the buñuelos here. Corn torch, manioc torch, costeño cheese, a little bit of egg, and they're fried in a special temperature and they get a round shape. Those are special because they have mozzarella cheese inside. They're all fresh. In Christmas time, we eat that with something sweet. So we put usually a blackberry jam or pineapple jam. You, you can feel it the yeah, way. A, yeah. yeah, you can feel it the way. It's like a cricket bowl. Yeah. Wow. Is there an elegant way to eat it or you no, just, just like dig an it. apple? Just yeah? go for it. Right. Just like that. That's it. Wow. Nalty mozzarella and a deep fried dough ball? Yeah, that was an easy sell for me. You see bonuelos all over Colombia, but for me, the paisa ones are the best. Every neighborhood has one, two, three, four bonuelos stands. This is something very traditional. One thing's for sure. The good people of Medellin can sleep safe in the knowledge that they're never more than a stone's throw away from deep fried gold. <laughs>
But our hunt for culinary treasure doesn't stop there, dear viewer. The trek continues. All good journeys need a pit stop, an algo in the local parlance. In el algo means something, and we also call algo when you do a stop during the day, like a break, uh, like a coffee break. We call algo, vamos para el algo, something. So guys, you're open, you want to have a snack, a Coke, completely healthy, even a beer. It is, this is a place. It is a place. My algo is a bag of rosquitas, made locally, I'll have you know. In Colombia, we always go for local and not for the international bank. Of course, craft food, all of them are here, yeah. but we la love to have local stuff. And as fierce proponents of the old adage, do as the locals do, we do and venture forth to Placida de Flores, a cornucopia of Colombian flavors. I want to show you something that's very traditional here. It's called Lulu. Okay. This is part of the Colombian daily diet we have here. I can't think of what to compare it to. It's very unique. It's delicious. This is Lulu. I like the... Yeah. In Colombia, we have two ways of having juice. It's going to be us in water or with milk. Wakes you up too. I'll be honest, I thought I knew my fruit. The apple, the banana, the snozberry, how hard can it be? Then I came to Colombia, introducing the tree tomato. Wow. You have a, a juice like that with a big Hanover, you're going to be you feel better? cute. <laughs> I think so. I've learned a lot working with food experts and enthusiasts across the world, but this is the first time I've walked away with a new hangover cure to try. Gaston, truly a gentleman and a scholar, left us with one parting thought. So we are plenty of natural resources and minerals like gold, oil, and many other, but actually this is not the real treasure we have here. Colombian treasure is people nature and talent yeah. is what we are really at. Is what we have to focus here about that treasure we have. This is, I think it's amazing. It's an amazing country with all of that that we can see all together, all around. And having spent a few days on the ground here in Colombia, I couldn't agree more. The currency here in Colombia is the Colombian peso represented by a dollar sign. Now, we don't usually dive into the volatile world of foreign exchange. You can just Google that stuff. However, there's one thing to note about the peso. As of now, May 2022, one US dollar is around 4,000 pesos, which can make the prices of everyday items look intimidating. I don't remember the last time I paid 100,000 cash for anything in any currency ever. But once you get over that sticker shock, you'll find that Colombia is an incredibly cheap city. You can get around, you can eat, you can drink for next to nothing. And on that note, let's do the rundown. A cup of legendary Colombian coffee will cost you just 1,200 pesos. A bottle of beautiful local beer will cost you just 5,000 pesos. The greatest indicator of a nation's cost, the good old Big Mac, it'll set you back around 12,500 pesos, or $3.29 American. If you can find one, that is. They're not a common sight in Medellin. Is this an unsafe city? No. Are you going to take any more precautions than you would in any other developing country or city? No. Make sensible choices when walking around at night. Watch your possessions on public transport and you will be fine. In fact, you will be rewarded with some of the most hospitable people I've ever come across. Uh, you know what? It's not as simple as that. Yes, this is a safe city, but that doesn't mean it doesn't have its bad spots. So leave the fat wallet in the hotel safe. Just bring what you need. Bring a paper copy of your ID, not the real thing. And listen to locals when they tell you what neighborhoods to avoid, especially at night. Oh, and one last thing. Jokes or even over-eagerness about Escobar, cocaine, or anything like that will not go down well here at all. Too many people in Medellin bear the scars, often quite literally, from that period. Leave it alone. This city is way, way more than its brief era of darkness. Believe it or not, this was my first time in South America. I have bounced around North and Central America most of my life, but 
Inexplicably, this continent's gravitational pull eluded me. So when the plane touched down in Colombia, I felt that incomparable, ephemeral sensation of anticipation. Not just a new city or even a new country, but a new continent. You only get that feeling a handful of times in life and then never again. At least not at that scale. And I couldn't have wished for a better gateway to South America than Medellin. A city of enthusiasm, pride, passion, and appetite. The rest of this continent has a lot to live up to.